Hey, when writing new code, we often use a stream of consciousness approach. This is a quick way to get our thoughts into code, but at some point we need to stop, step back, and take an overall look at what we've coded. This is a good time for some refactoring and practicing our dry principles. With dry, or don't repeat yourself, the goal is to reduce or eliminate duplicate code, making our intent more clear. In this video, we'll examine techniques for using generics to build generalized functions. Let's take a look. I'm in Stackplitz and looking at a simplistic application. We create a signal that holds a reference to a hard-coded snack, and a signal that references a hard-coded user. In the browser, I'll open the console. Click the Update Snack button to update the snack name and log the result. Click the Update User button to update the username and log that result. Looking at the code, notice that in both cases, we update the signal by taking in the existing object and creating a new object using the spread operator, then update a property. By creating a new object, the reference to the object is changed, so the signal sees the object as modified. But notice even in this simple example, we have repeated code. Let's dry this out using generics. We'll start with the logging and create a generalized log signal function. Create the function here, outside of our class. In a real project, we'd add these generalized functions to a utility folder, but this works for our purposes. Export function log signal. It takes in a signal, and we use the quick fix to add the needed import. Then we console.log out the signal value by opening the box using parentheses. But we see an error. The signal is a generic type that requires one type argument. What does that mean? Generics are a TypeScript feature for creating reusable functions that can work with a variety of data types, yet remain type safe. We've seen generic types before in Angular. For example, when issuing an HTTP GET request, we use a generic type argument to define the shape of the data we want to return. Signals also use generics. In our example, we define this signal to hold an instance of a snack object, and this holds a user object. This error is then telling us that we need to specify a signal of what. Since we want to use this function for a user or a snack, we could specify user or snack. But that limits us to only those two types. Let's instead use a generic type parameter as a placeholder. Our login signal function can then log a signal of any type. And I don't mean the any type here, I literally mean any type. The most common name for a generic type parameter is t, so we'll use that name here, signal of t. But it can't find t. To use this generic type in a function parameter, we add the generic type parameter to the function name, log signal of t. We now have a generic function that takes in a signal of any type and logs its value. Cool! Now we can replace our repeated logging code with calls to this generic function, log signal of snack, and pass in this dot snack. But since TypeScript can infer the generic type from the arguments, we really don't have to specify it here. I'll delete it. Hovering over, we see that it is indeed log signal of snack. Now let's replace the logging of the user, log signal, this dot user. Click update snack, and we see the updated snack logged to the console. Click update user, and we see the updated user. Okay, we really aren't reducing much repeated code here, but I wanted to start off with a straightforward example. Let's add a level of difficulty. Say we often want to log out one property of the object in the signal, not the entire signal. Something like this. Here we log the name property of the snack object in the signal. How do we do that in a generic function? 
let's add an optional parameter to our logging function that takes in the property to log. I'll call it prop, short for property, and add a question mark to make it optional. Next, we specify the type. But what is the type of this property? Scrolling down, the snack object has one set of properties. The user object has different properties. What do we use then as the type? This is where key of can help. Key of is a TypeScript operator that provides the keys of an object as a union type. This is conceptually similar to object.keys, but for types. The keys of an object are its properties. So key of snack is the type ID or name or price or is in stock. And key of user is the type ID or name or username. Here in our function signature, we specify key of. But key of what? Well, we could again go with user or snack. That works, but it isn't very general. We call that T represents the type of the object to log. So we can use T here. Key of T. Nice. In the body of the function, we check whether the prop parameter was passed in. If so, we log the defined property. We'll figure out that code in a moment. Otherwise, we log the object. How do we log the property? Calling sg parent parent dot prop doesn't work. I'll delete it. We instead use the prop parameter as the object key. Scrolling up. Using object key syntax, we could change the logging code to this. This accesses the name property of the snack object that's in the snack signal. If I click the Update Snack button, we see the log name here. We can use this style syntax to more generally reference a property from an object. Scrolling back down, in the console.log, specify the signal, open the box to access the object, then use the object key syntax to access the passed in property. That looks interesting. Scrolling up, I'll comment out our extra console.log here. To try out the new parameter, change the log signal call for the snack to log the name property. I'll type in quotes. And notice that the drop-down list displays the snack object properties. Cool! And if I put in something that isn't valid, I see an error. That's because we've typed this argument to only those keys, or properties, of this object. We get type safety. I'll change it to name. If I click the Update Snack button, we see the name in the console. You may be looking at this code and wondering why we haven't tackled the update functionality. It seems like a good candidate for some useful generic code. So let's create a generalized method to update a signal. Scrolling down, start as we did before. Export a function called update property of t, so it's generic. We'll pass in the signal like we did in the log signal function. But because we plan to update the signal, we need to type it as a writable signal of t. We also pass in the property to update. We'll define its type as key of t, just like we did for the log signal method. But we need one more parameter. We have the signal containing the object to update, and the property of that object to update. We're missing the updated value. I'll call that parameter value. And what is its type? The properties of the snack object include an ID and price that are of type number, a name that's a string, and a boolean. So we could define this type as string, or number, or boolean. But that's not very generalized. Let's think about our options for a moment. Hmm. I'll scroll up and uncomment this logging statement. Notice that when we use the object key syntax, that the type of the result is the desired type. For example, this key is of type string. If we change name to is in stock, the key is of type boolean. Let's use this syntax to define our type. I'll comment this out again. Scrolling back down, instead of this union type, I'll set the type of our value to t braces key of t. 
That returns the correct type based on the object and property, slick. Inside the method, we call sg.update to update the signal. The update method provides the existing object, and we use that to create a new object. We can't just put curly braces here because the arrow function thinks we're creating a multi-line function. So add parentheses. Use spread syntax to create a new object from the provided object. Set the property to update using the object key syntax and the prop parameter. And set it to the value parameter. We now have a generalized update function. Yay! But will it work? Spoiler alert, it isn't quite right. Let's take a look. Scrolling up, we'll replace our duplicated update code with a call to our new function. In the update snack method, I'll comment out the existing code so we can still see it. Then call update property. We pass in the snack signal. And for the property, we again see the list of valid snack properties. We'll update the name. Next, we provide the updated value. I'll update the snack to peanuts. Click on the Update Snack button, and we see the updated value here. It works! But what if I try true here as the value? Hmm. It's not generating an error if I enter a Boolean value. And if I click Update Snack, it changes the name to true. What? Aren't we strongly typing this argument to the correct type? Let's change the value to null. Now we see an error. It's telling us that the value argument must be of type string, or number, or boolean. Why is that? Scrolling back down, as I mentioned previously, the key of operator provides the keys of an object type as a union type. So key of snack is the type ID or name or price or is in stock. And the type of value is T, key of T. So it's a number or string or boolean, as we see in the error message. As long as we provide one of these types, the type checking accepts our value. That's why a string and a boolean value worked, but null did not. If we want stronger type checking, we need to limit, or constrain, the property parameter to only one of those types instead of any of those types. We define a generic constraint using the extends keyword on a generic parameter. So key of returns a union of all the object properties. Extends key of limits the type to one of those object properties. Let's change our update property function to accept any type t and a constrained type k that extends key of t. I'll reformat a bit. Our first parameter is then a writable signal of type t. Our second parameter is constrained to type k, which is one of that object's properties. And our value is of type t, k again using the object key notation representing the type of value stored in the property k. I don't know about you, but I'm feeling a little bit like this. Let's finish up. Back at the top, we'll fix our syntax error. This function now knows the valid value type based on the past and parameter, so null isn't valid. Neither is true. The name property value type must be a string. And if we change the property to is in stock, the value must be of type boolean. I'll undo that and delete this unused code. Now we can change the update user method to call our update property method and delete the unused code. Trying it out, click update snack and the snack name is updated. Click update user and the username is updated. We've used the power of generics to build generalized, type-safe functions. Are there places where you can minimize repeated code in your projects using these techniques? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.